Hello John. Hello Oliver. A letter was recently sent to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The letter was sent from 500 knowledgeable and experienced scientists. So you're going to read out what that says, what they oh, said. I am. And it's about the climate because, uh, let's face it, you can't look at a newspaper or listen to the radio or look at uh, uh, television in, in this country or uh, the channels in the UK. Uh, they're con constantly yapping about uh, uh, climate change and so much so that uh, people that have been prosecuted for these drones that have interrupted uh, aeroplane flights in, in Heathrow and causing, could have caused ma major uh, problem for, for the safety of passengers etc. Uh, these were uh, by people that have gone extreme as regards to climate uh, change, uh, that uh, somehow or other they want all the planes to be grounded so as we can swim the channel or swim wherever we want to go or something. Now perhaps um, I don't know how we get going anywhere with what they're at. Anyway, this is uh, an example of the, what would I call it, the questions about this climate change, that there's not everyone agrees with what the media and these other uh, totalitarian uh, governments spout. And this is a letter that was uh, from a professor, uh, we'll call him Gus uh, Berko. And it's actually G U U S, but I presume it's probably uh, language for Augustine. I'm called that too, mm -hmm. uh, Beckett. And uh, <clears throat> he's written this letter to um, Senior Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, who's the Portuguese uh, former Prime Minister, as the Secretary General, United Nations Headquarters, New York. Uh, United States of America as the address and also addressed to uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Patricia Espion as a Catalano, I presume uh, she's Spanish or something like that, Executive Secretary, United Nations, Work, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and uh, United Nations Secretary at the UN campus, Plaza de Vincenio National 1. Uh, Bonn, Germany. Well, it's, in, it's in Germany. Uh, and here's the. I'm going to read it out. Very good. Uh, Your Excellencies, there is no climate emergency. Uh, I have already put out videos uh, on YouTube to that effect. And uh, here's a confirmation a global network of more than 500 knowledgeable and experienced scientists, scientists and professionals in climate and related fields have the honour to address to your excellencies the attached European climate declaration for which the signatures to this letter are the national ambassadors. The general circulation models of climate on which international policy is at present founded are unfit for their purpose, unfit for their purpose. Therefore, it is cruel as well as imprudent to advocate the squandering of millions of dollars on the basis of results from such immature models. Now, this is what uh, this nonsense about the climate is based on. Immature models. Current climate policies pointlessly and grievously undermine the economic system, putting lives at risk in countries denied access to affordable, reliable electric, electrical energy, such as Africa, where people are dying because of their stupid policies. We urge you to follow a climate policy based on sound science, realistic economics, and genuine concern for those harmed by costly but unnecessary attempts at mitigation. My goodness. We ask you to place the declaration, the decla declaration on the agenda of your imminent New York session. I wonder will it happen? Will they deny the truth? Much as our Saviour was denied the truth in that fateful time 2,000 years ago. 
We also invite you to organise with us a constructive, high-level meeting between world-class scientists on both sides of the climate debate. Early in 2020, don't be afraid of such a, a debate. Uh, otherwise, it means that you are a fraud. I'm just saying this. Such a meeting would be consistent with the historical proven principles of sound science and natural justice that both sides should be fully and fairly heard. Auditor et altera pars. Latin, the famous language, the language of the universal church. Deny us. And that's what we were taught. We also invite you to organise with us a constructive high-level meeting between world-class scientists on both sides of the climate debate early in 2020. We we'll wait to see that it happens. Such a meeting would be consistent with the historically proven principles of a sound science and natural justice that both sides should be fully and fairly heard. Please let us know your thoughts how we bring about such a momentous joint meeting. Professor Gus Berkut, Professor Renner Duberger, Terry Dunleavy, V. Force, Professor Geoffrey Foss, Martin Jadal, Jadal, Rob Lemaire, uh, by the way, Berkut is the Netherlands, uh, Professor Reynolds de Berger, French Canada, Terry Dunleavy, New Zealand, Viva Forbes, Australia, Professor Geoffrey Foss, English Canada, Martin Jeddel, Norway, Rob Lemaire, Belgium, Professor Richard Lindsen, USA, Professor Igmar Norden, Sweden, Jim O'Brien, Irish Republic, up oh, the Republic, you <laughs> <laughs> somebody from Ireland, I thought they were all in, in brainwashed, Professor Alberto Prestini, Tendisi, Italy, Professor Beno Ritond, France. Professor Fritz Fahrenholt, Germany. Uh, Moncton of Brenchley, that's Christopher Moncton, the United Kingdom. Ambassadors of the European Climate Declaration. There's a second bit of this. There is no climate emergency. A global network of 500 scientists and professionals has prepared this urgent message. Climate science should be less political, while climate policies should be more scientific. Scientists should openly address the uncertainties and exaggerations in their predictions of global warming, while politicians should dispassionately count the real benefits as well as the imagined costs of adaptation of, to global warming and the real costs as well as the imagined benefits of mitigation. And that's a very important word, the imagined benefits of mitigation. Zero, in my opinion. Natural as well as anthropogenic factors cause warming. The ge geological archive reveals that Earth's climate has varied as long as the planet has existed, with natural cold and warm phases. The Little Ice Age ended as recently as 1850. Therefore, it is no surprise that we have now experienced a period of warming. Warming is far slower than predicted. The world has warmed at less than half the originally predicted rate and at less than half the rate to be expected on the basis of net anthropogenic forcing and radio, radioactive imbalance. It tells us that we are far from understanding climate change. Far from understanding climate change. Let that sink in. Let those words sink in. Let your ears be open. Climate policy relies on inadequate models. Climate models have many shortcomings and are not remotely plausible as policy tools. Moreover, they most likely exaggerate the effects of greenhouse gases such as CO2. In addition, they ignore the fact that enriching the atmosphere with CO2 is beneficial. Not 
the nonsense that they spout. That's my bit. CO2 is plant food, the basis of all life on earth. Take that on board. CO2 is plant food, the basis of all life on earth, in which we live, fortunately. CO2 is not a pollutant. It is essential to our life on earth. Photosynthesis is a blessing. More CO2 is beneficial for nature. Greening the earth. Additional CO2 in the air has promoted growth in global plant biomass. It is also good for agriculture, increasing the yields, the yields of crops worldwide. So as to feed the poor, which are often talking about also. Global warming has not increased natural disasters. There is no statistical evidence that global warming is intensifying hurricanes, floods, droughts and such like natural disasters are making them more frequent. However, CO2 mitigation measures are as damaging as they are costly. For instance, wind turbines kill birds and bats and palm oil plantations destroy the biodiversity of the rainforests. It is well known fact, uh, as I go about the country of Ireland, the wind turbines dotting the landscape like a blight, like some kind of a fungus. Uh, I can't for the life of me see any benefit to them. All I can see is that they're destroying nature. They're destroying the landscape and they're destroying birds. Our feathered friends, we love to hear them singing. Climate policy must respect scientific and economic realities. There is no climate emergency. Therefore, there is no cause for panic and alarm, as one has seen by this unfortunate poor 15-year-old from Sweden that got all this publicity about the climate. The poor devil knows about the fact. Wait she grows up and has something between her ears. We strongly oppose the harmful and unrealistic net zero CO2 policy proposed for two, 2050. If better approaches emerge, we will have ample time to reflect and adapt. The aim of international policy should be to provide reliable and affordable energy at all times and throughout the world, uh, particularly in those countries that badly need it and now have been denied it by the World Bank because of their obsession with this fraud of the climate agenda. Thank you very much John. Thank you very much Oliver.